It seems to be an endless hobby narrative that we need to broaden the pie, we need to grow the pie, and we need to get the next generation in, but we've got the narrative all wrong. Stick around. to all my sports card collectors, investors, all of my collectibles friends. It's Friday. We made it to the end of the week. We've got some great football coming up this weekend. And then what? The College Football National Championship is coming up. we got some exciting things going on. If you're new here, you're looking for almost yes, daily sports exactly. card collectibles type videos, it? hit the big red button down below the subscribe button and we will continue on and you'll be notified when each video comes out. Also connect with me on IG at Sports Card Dad. And I'm also on Twitter, the sports card dad. Big shout out to today's video sponsor, ComC.com. Your home for buying, selling, flipping all the hottest trading cards. Their consignment marketplace home to now more than 30 million cards from baseball superstars like Aaron Judge to Marvel favorites like Spider-Man. ComC has something for every type of collector. Visit ComC.com today to build your collection with your favorite cards. Guys, like I always say, ComC is the Disneyland for card collectors. Check them out. All right, we all hear it. We all hear it. We need to get more young people in to the hobby. We need to kind of broaden this pie, make it bigger. We need to have kind of that next generation coming up to keep this thing going. Here's the problem, though, is we don't have the proper narrative to make that happen. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, what happens with all this new product that we see coming out? We've kind of gotten to the point where there's a different parallel animal color combination every single day. There's some some brand new saber tooth tiger. <laughs> White Tiger Parallel, which is fine. I mean, look, we can't put the genie back in the bottle now. It's not 1990. It's never going to be 1990 when I was growing up and there was literally just kind of basic sets that came out and they were cards that were just made out of cardboard, maybe some glossy cards here and there. But for the most part, it was fairly basic compared to today's cards. We didn't have a lot of numbered cards or autograph cards, memorabilia, relics, that sort of thing. And so we moved into a different world. But the thing that I think that needs to change is the base cards and also just, you know, a lot of these parallels, it's funny because now everything's a hit. There's so many different base cards, patch cards, color cards, relic cards, all these things, but a lot of them really aren't worth a lot of money. Now, if you're my age, I'm 41, about to be 42, you know, I care a lot about the money that I'm spending that I'm putting in. I'm trying to retain value. I'm just looking for kind of a store of value that grows slowly over time. But what are you supposed to do if you are a parent? Myself, I have a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old that are kind of in this bracket of kind of that new generation. And you go to the store and even if you find retail product that's at a Walmart or a Target or even online, at its, at its cheapest for a football, basketball, baseball box, it's going to be, what, $20, 30 $40 at, at those places? When I was a kid, it was literally $0.50, cents, $0.75, cents, a dollar for a pack. You didn't have to commit. You didn't have to make a $30 or $40 commitment at Walmart to get some cards. And so that's where I think that actually shows have probably gotten a lot more popular for this sort of thing is probably just parents figuring like, Hey, do I want to spend 40 or $50 at, you know, Walmart to get just a, a random retail box of something? Or I guess we could go to this card show or a card shop and go through the 50 cent box or the dollar box and find stars or find kind of the players, upcoming rookies that my son, daughter are looking for. And I don't have to kind of go out 30, $40 and, and might not get anything they want. But the narrative nowadays is it's all about the hits, whether we're opening just a box, if you go out and buy a box or if you're entering into a break. And and then if you're watching breaks online, it's all about the, the mega hit. And here's the thing is that the, the mega hit, especially when we're looking at higher end products like a National Treasures uh, or Flawless, the majority of families can't afford that stuff. They just can't. You know, not everybody's Mark Wahlberg opening up boxes with their kids that are a couple thousand dollars each or whatever. It's not real life. And I know that Fanatics has talked about kind of having a full line of products, meaning I think that they are going to have kind of the, the lower price stuff in the future that will come out that will be widely accessible and, and highly printed and that sort of thing. But if the narrative doesn't change that it's okay for, for young people to have kind of the base cards or the lower end parallels or whatever it is and use those for trading cards. One of my awesome viewers, Michael, he sent me a clip a while back and I want to show it because it gives you an idea of more of what it was collecting cards in the 80s and the early 90s. Roll it. Guys, 
Roll it, the clip. All right, here's the deal. Okay, I'll give you my Meryl show and the t -Ant for your McCovey and... No, 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 McCovey's off the table. Oh, come on, Paul, be reasonable. I am being reasonable. McCovey is off the table. <sighs> Unless you really have to think about your Williams. Oh, you can't be serious. Willie McCovey for Ted Williams? That's an insult. These were active conversations on a Saturday afternoon that I would have with my buddies. We'd have certain cards, and it was going back and forth about this player, that player. This player is not better than that player. Why would I trade this or that? Or, okay, fine, I'll trade you these two for this one. Those were the conversations we were having. In the back of Beckett Magazine, I don't know if they still do this or if this is still a thing, but in the back of Beckett Magazine, they had the addresses for each team. And you could send in requests, autograph requests. I pulled out cards that I sent away in the late 80s, early 90s, Penny Hardaway, here's one, and you send a self-addressed stamped envelope with a note to these players, and hopefully they would send back a signed card. You're asking essentially for their autograph, but if you notice, these are not mega cards. This is what, 90 or 91 Pro Set? 91 Pro Set, this is a third year Troy Aikman card. Dominique Wilkins. The late Reggie White, legend. And actually, this is a really cool card, the pinnacle. And then, of course, he was a very religious man, so the Bible with the auto, kind of a cool thing. But these are this is all from my childhood. I was literally 10, 11, 12 years old. Shannon Sharp, you know this guy, him and Skip Bayless. You know, so there is so much you can do in the hobby, even just the, the autograph stuff with the base cards. And again, I don't know if you can still do that, but that's something that as a young person, I thought that was really fun because I put, it, look, it's literally taking a base card, you put a stamp, at two, it's two stamps, envelopes, send them away, and then hopefully they send you something back. Sometimes they'd send a letter saying, hey, thank you very much for sending me this letter. I mean, it was awesome. That was all part of the hobby experience. But I think it's okay to teach young people that there are levels to this. And when you're 10, you don't necessarily necessarily get in on the National Treasures RPA. You're you're trading with your buddies. I want to I would like to see more talk around that sort of stuff. And again, the hobby is a massive thing. I'm not at every show, I'm not in every neighborhood or whatever to hear. Maybe this is a thing that's actively going on. But base cards of superstars or upcoming rookies, they don't always necessarily have to go off for grading either. They can just be traded on you know non-graded cards can just be traded among friends. Three ring binders, let's bring those back. My seven year old is a big Pokemon card kid and he he has a three ring binder with all of his stuff in it. He doesn't have a trading partner yet for, you know, for his cars to where he would trade back and forth. Not the same way I did back in the day, but I could see that totally being a thing. If his buddies came over with their th with their binders of cards, totally do trades and that sort of thing. So let's get more talk around this and bring this back. As we say, this is kind of more of a collector's market now, right? Prices are moving downward, but one thing that hasn't is sealed product. Boxes of cards are still very, very expensive to buy. You know, so for parents out there, hey, you know, let's bring kind of this narrative back like it's 1990 all over again. It's okay to trade these base cards. They're trading cards. It's okay to hold on to these. They're not trash just because you didn't hit the uh, the patch auto, you know, or whatever that was supposed to come one per average on in the box. We need to get away from the lottery stuff when it comes to young people in the next generation and just kind of get them involved in just the cards anyway. Like, hey, the cards are cool. And honestly, today's cards are awesome. You know, the cards from the 90s, I love a lot of the designs and stuff, but there are some really nice cards that are made today, singles that once you open the boxes, they go out to the singles market. You can get lots on eBay of players and different things for very inexpensively these days. So there are a lot of new ways to get into this. I would like to hear your thoughts on this topic. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.